Okay, have I got a treat for you. This next segment is an interview with one of my favorite authors. Actually, my favorite genealogy mystery author. I call you my favorite forensic genealogy author. <laughs> and we're here to talk about what's going to be happening tomorrow, Nathan. Dylan Goodwin, welcome to Mondays with Mert. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad I'm back. <laughs> yes, it's all good. So you've got something happening tomorrow. Tell me about it. Yes. So the latest in the Morton series, book uh, mm -hmm. 10, The Deserter's Tale, uh, mm -hmm. will be out tomorrow in paperback, which I know lots of people are eagerly anticipating. So, yes, it's available everywhere tomorrow in paperback. OK, so this is number 10 in the Morton series. And Morton Ferrier is quite a character. He's your lead. He's your alter ego, I honestly think. Is that possibly <laughs> true? <laughs> yeah, lo lots of people think that, yes. And some sometimes when I'm being interviewed, I'll be called Morton and I just go along with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I started out, I, I think I probably did start, you know, base him on me. And then um, funnily enough, I, I, I did it for my master's in creative writing. And uh, the first time I wrote um, something substantial with Morton, um, my university lecturer said, um, don't base it on yourself because it, you end up actually making the character not all that likable because you think you can't make them be nice so people then go oh that character's lovely it's based on nathan and he's lovely so you end up making them not very likable so he said don't do that so i i, I switched from that point okay so now he's just like a very good friend of mine i know what he's thinking it's... and what he'll do well he emulates some of the behavior you have when it comes to research Mm. at archives and libraries and getting original documents and dealing with super fussy archivists in certain places that mm, expect you to be very quiet and only, I mean, it's like you're disturbing him to ask for a file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so um, Morton is... Um, as I mentioned, it's number 10 in this series. This new, The Deserter's Tale, is number 10. And I've actually had people ask me, because they know I love your work, um, do we need to read the books in order? Like, between now and tomorrow, people would have to read nine <laughs> books real quick. Like, is, is it, Tell me what, what you planned as yes. far as accessibility. So usually on the back of the books, I say um, this is a standalone book and it can be read out of order, but but it is a series. So as you said, it's 10 books and um, each one is a different case for Morton and that case gets wrapped up. So you could pick up book five and you haven't needed to read the first four, um, but his backstory does go through uh, the whole series. So you would be missing out on that. Um, but with this one, I haven't put that on the back because I do think you probably do need to have read the others because it, it I, I basically wrote it as um it's book 10 and it was the 10 year anniversary so it, it came out on uh ebook on kindle um in last september which was 10 mm -hmm. years exactly um since the publication of the first book hide in the past mm -hmm. and the idea was it would be quite a short story just kind of a, a celebratory um thing and it just got longer and longer and longer <laughs> and um <laughs> actually became like a novella length and um and it's kind of it's it's picking on lots of part, uh, bits from his past, really. And I think that might be a bit confusing if you hadn't read the rest. I don't. I think you could read it and, and understand it all, but I think you'd have a better experience if you, yeah, read the first nine. Well, <laughs> well so he still he is traveling to my um, where half of well two thirds of my family lives. My um, two households of grandchildren to Salt mm -hmm. Lake City, the genealogy yeah. mecca yeah. of the world, basically. Yeah. Um, and he is on a mission, um, but it is resolving issues from his past that has been that second storyline through these earlier novels. Yeah. Um, and there is a lot of... Um, of um, intertwining because that, you know... He, his concerns with his family, with his relationships and who he is in the world end up um, 
getting addressed very directly in the deserter's tale. That, is that a good way to sum it up? Old yes. merch off a rocker? No. <laughs> no, no, that is a good way. It's hard to it's hard as well because you don't want to give spoilers. So it's very difficult. Yeah, to you about. saw me you saw me choose the word. Choosing yeah. your words. Yeah. So yeah, he's Morton's based in the UK. Most of his cases are in the UK. But he he in this story he gets invited to Roots Tech to um in 2023 to give um two talks. And he one of them one of them is on researching your Sussex ancestors, so he's quite comfortable with that. And the other mm -hmm. one, he's invited to do a DNA panel, and he's not really sure what he's supposed to be doing and who else is on the panel. Um, and I've got some lovely uh, guest appearances for the panel. So Drew, the real Drew Smith is hosting, and the panel is uh, Diane Southard, um, Johnny Pearl, Roberta Estes, um, Morton. And Morton's ex girlfriend, Maddie, who is the lead character in the other series of books that I do that are um, based in Salt Lake City, the Venator um, Cold Case series. So, yeah, so basically he goes there and he's on this panel with Maddie, he hasn't seen since she basically um, left their relationship in England many years. Oh, the word ago. is dumped. Yes. Yeah. 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 He was dumped. Yeah. And he didn't really fully understand why, why she, why she dumped him and went and, but he's kind of got over that and he's got his own life and family and everything, but he was obviously, it was a bit awkward and he didn't know how to tell his, his wife about the fact that his ex-girlfriend was on the panel, but then his talk was being live streamed. So it kind of, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, he, he talks to Maddie and, and they kind of explore their past together they explore and, a little yeah yep. and he's also there trying to work on a, a, a case um for his wife's grand, uh, great grandfather who he was uh, english and he served in the first world war and then suddenly he basically disappeared and um ended up in las vegas as you do and so Morton, yeah right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Morton is, is uh He's using traditional genealogy and DNA to try and figure out basically what happened uh, to this guy. And that that man's story is is loosely based on someone in my own family tree who did a very, very similar thing. Basically, he just upped sticks from his family um, and just had a, a second, changed his name, had a second wife without divorcing the first one. And mm. then did the same again. And he had a third wife, changed his name, didn't divorce. Anyway, um, so a long always, story yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's working on all these different things. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of it's a, it's a nice uh, celebratory thing for the 10 year anniversary for, for the series. So, folks, um, those of you who are into DNA research and using it as another tool in your genealogical toolbox, you'll recognize that the names of the other panelists at Roots Tech are well-regarded DNA experts who know how to take DNA results and look at the paper trail and decide, you know, are these is there a misattributed parentage relationship or is this on the mom side or the dad side of your DNA tree? And <clears throat> that's what intrigues me as a genealogist. Now in your earlier books, DNA hadn't really been invented. Well, we had DNA, but we hadn't been yeah. using it this way. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it, now it's pretty universal and we hear every day of great mm -hmm. breakthroughs um, because um, there'll be a long lost cousin and this separated twins end up, you know, coming together again. But what I like about your books in this series, well, I like all your series actually, but <laughs> anyway, this one is that you're actually talking about going to and parking in this odd parking lot at this archive and uh, filling out the call slip. Mm -hmm. You're actually, we're following along with Morton as if we were there, his shadow and going through the frustrations of waiting for something to come mm -hmm. up. And, you know, nothing ever comes. <laughs> it doesn't get there till the last 20 minutes before yeah. the place closes. Um, and then the conundrum of needing wall space to uh, plot out what you know and what you postulate and trying to prove or disprove and waking up in the night to try something new at this website or that very typical 
behavior that we all go through as we're diligently trying to climb our family tree. Let's switch gears a little bit and go exploring on your website. Let me pull that up and I'll actually zoom in on it. Love that shot of you. So mysterious right then and there. Jenny Lodge. <laughs> oh, really? Great. Okay. And so here's the link to the book. And if you click it, it takes you right to Amazon. Yep. It came up right away. Amazing. My internet's working. And yes, it is available in Kindle today and hardcover. Um, and it, it, it is heavy reading, but I prefer paperback of late. I don't know why. I just do. Now, one of the things when a person clicks here on books, they, there is the Forensic Genealogy series. Here's Venator's Cold Case. That's the newer series. Mm -hmm. And aren't you supposed to be typing <laughs> <laughs> on a book in that series? I am, yeah. So I'm working on book three um, yeah. right now. And I, yeah, just, just before um, I came on here, I, I've just closed the, the file down. I think I was at... It's, it's basically it's almost done it's almost done yeah oh um, good so, yeah i'm nearly there and then um obviously it needs to then go through the editing uh, process and everything but i'm hoping for a mid um august release for this for book. that series all right yeah. so when i'm scrolling on now folks i think i can even zoom in a little bit let me just do the plus control plus plus so that you can see it very well um <clears throat> You did the thing of adding a prequel at a certain point in time. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, here's, here's the deserter tale. And um, other interesting things here is where you will be placing the third volume. These are very um, intriguing, heavy on the DNA part. Um, and then you've got yeah. some interesting things like Mrs. McDougal. Hmm. And some nonfiction books. So I need to be fair. the The bulk of your work is the is the um, fictional character of the Venator case and and of Morton Ferrier and his 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 cadre of uh, his his family. Yes. I'm I'm call and family can be uh, actual family and it can be those that you draw near to and they accept you as family and vice versa but you yeah. have some very detailed um uh non-fiction books as well and i hear you're outgrowing your um office space there <laughs> yeah i need to yeah yeah i started with the um the non-fiction they, they were the things that i kind of got me into writing really and i really enjoyed the process and thought i you know and i had fiction ideas and thought yeah i'll give it a go and um here we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you for joining me today, but we got a surprise for uh, our viewers and <clears throat> I have two books to give away. Uh, the new Morton book 10, I'm calling it that the deserters yep. tale. And so what I'm going to do is have uh, after you step away, uh, we'll admit that we're pre-recording this because of your jet setting lifestyle <laughs> you're not available on mondays before the release of yeah. uh, morton's 10 the deserter's tale so what we'll do my panelists will help me pick two lucky winners and i will see that they receive your book compliments of you thank you very much for donating that and uh, um have a great uh debut and keep typing i, I will, I will. <laughs> all right folks oh golly folks you can see why i enjoy um uh, nathan's books it they read like talking with him it's so easy to relate um it's not one of those books where you have to like go back three chapters and say what the heck was that you get the flow. It's readable. It's relatable as a genealogist. I'm really strong on the on the paperwork side, the paper trail side, and I'm learning more and more about the DNA side because I I my DNA was like like your dog. You just had your dog tested, Nathan. Mine's just <laughs> vanilla, plain vanilla. Everybody's lined up where they're supposed to be, so it was a non-issue for me. Um, but uh, 
folks, have fun. And thank you, Nathan, so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay.